Hi, I'm Bill Mould, and in this video, through the use of some graphics, I'm going to try to explain to you an odd phenomenon of the side flexing of deep section carbon rims. I'm going to start with an explanation with some graphics and then show you an experiment I did and then more explanatory graphics. We start with a graphic showing two wheels that are identical in every respect except for the depth of the carbon rim. The hubs are the same and the spokes are the same except for their lengths. When we ride, there is a force pushing down from the weight of our bodies and the bike. Let's look first at the shallower of the two rims. When I tilt the bike this way as I'm riding, there is a force on the ground pushing the tire and the rim to the left. When I lean the other way, the force is to the right. With my deeper section carbon rim, I have the same situation. A force to the left and a force to the right. When I lean the wheel over in either direction, in addition to the whole wheel flexing, there are hinge points here for the shallower rim and here for the deeper one. And that allows the rim to swivel about that hinge point as we see here. With the same load, the wheel on the right may swivel more to the right and left than the one on the left. To a lesser extent, the rim on the other side of the wheel, which is the top, will swivel to the right or left to a lesser degree, but in opposite direction to the direction at the bottom. In this picture here, the wheel on the left and the wheel on the right are identical. To make the rim on the right deeper and therefore more aerodynamic, if we put a fairing on it, then mechanically it still looks the same as the one on the left and will behave the same in terms of any left and right flexing. Just to drive home that point, this is a deep section zip wheel where the nipples are right here, and therefore that is the hinge point. Conversely, in this wheel here where we have a fairing, the spokes go through these holes and extend all the way to the, to the back, and that's where the nipples attach, and that is the hinge point. Now let's take a look at an interesting uh, experiment I did. I tested side loads on three rims, and the most interesting of these was a deep section carbon rim, and we'll pick that up next. Here's my setup for wheel three. I've got the wheel in the um, device uh, supported uh, quite nicely by this rod here, and there's no uh, discernible play in the wheel. Uh, this is my reference. I can get this very close to the wheel because I want to be able to get very good measurements between these two points and the rim, and then these two points and the rim. And I can do that with a with a, uh, a caliper, which is accurate to two decimal places. So that's good. And we can see here that my bubble is exactly in the in the middle of this level so that I know that my rod is perfectly perpendicular and my rim is perfectly horizontal to start with. And when I lower my weight down here, then that is going to pull down on this part of the wheel here on the outer edge at the 270 degree point. You can see here that I've added some pretty heavy vertical supports to stabilize the uh, table when I have a large side load put on the wheel. And here we are over on the other side. So I can tell you from having uh, measured this uh, device here, this table, during both loaded and unloaded configurations that everything remains perfectly level. The rod in the middle remains perfectly vertical and uh, these side braces do as well. Here's a graphic of wheel three unloaded with the 85 millimeter unnamed Chinese carbon rim. Let's put a line here just as a reference and that line is sitting right on top of the rim at its outer extremities. And here we see a weight just at the point that it's applied, at the second that it's applied. 
And we know a couple things for sure. We know from our experience that the rim is going to go down at this 270 degree point and go up here at 90. But what we don't know is what will happen in the inner areas. Here it could go theoretically up or down, and here it could go up or down also. Here I have wheel three redrawn to scale. Here's our wheel. Let's get some dimensions. These are the uh, lines that represent where the lock nuts are. That's the center line. And the distance from the lock nut to the center is 65 millimeters. We have a bead seat diameter of 622 millimeters, and we'll use that as the diameter of the wheel. And these two lengths in here are, as we know, 85 millimeters. The slope of this red dashed line here is zero across the whole wheel and also within the rim sections. Let's see what kind of changes we have with a 65 pound load applied to that point at 270 degrees. We see a drop here of 12.95 millimeters goes down here by 7.21 millimeters over here we have an increase the rim goes up by 6.19 millimeters at the edge and in here with the spokes attached 3.83 millimeters if we look at the slope of that line there which clearly goes down the the middle of the rim we have a slope there of minus 2.8 percent over here a slope of minus 6.8 percent and in the middle part that connects the the two inner edges of the rim we have a slope of negative 4.2 percent here's my wheel i put a cassette on it and we're going to picture this in the back of the bike and the bike is riding away from us so here is the uh, frame of the rear triangle and we're going to put a tire on the bike, put the road under it, and a saddle. And these are my brake pads. But my problem is if I want to sprint and I stand up on the pedals, then I'm going to get that lateral deflection of the rim to the left at the road and to the right where the brakes are. And my rim is going to rub on the right rear brake. Very interestingly, I think if that happens, there's not much you can do about it because where the rim is deflecting left and right is beyond where the spokes attach. And your ability to influence the lateral stability of the wheel depends on tensioning, loosening spokes, using different lacing patterns and so on. None of that is going to affect the movement of the rim at the exterior. It should be clear from looking at this that the propensity of the wheel to deflect in the mode shown is to a degree a function of the depth of the rim. A deeper rim will deflect more because the point of deflection is farther from where the spokes attach. It's also true though that engineers can design rims with enough stiffness to mitigate this. Now, 65 pounds of side load is a huge side load. You would have to be a heavy rider and lean the bike over quite a bit. But we are seeing in this case here, 6.2 millimeters of deflection. That's almost a quarter of an inch. In most cases, this space right here is going to be two millimeters possibly, or more likely less than one millimeter. So you have very little room to accommodate movement of the rim. So if you have a perplexing problem of a deep section carbon rim rubbing on the brake pads and everyone who looks at it is, is unable to fix it or provide an explanation, what I have just described to you could very well be the cause. So this is a very interesting phenomenon that shows up in deep section carbon rims and I hope you enjoyed this and gained something from my explanation. Here is my contact information.